Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up as I give a recap with photos offset to the side of Insecure Season 4 Episode 8 entitled Low Key Happy. I give the minute marks in the comments just in case you've already seen the episode and you just wanna get to my thoughts. I have all of that information below. Make sure that you flood the comments and let me know what you think. I got the recap that's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Lawrence is waiting on Issa to arrive. And as a viewer, it's this energy of, oh my goodness, they are finally meeting up to talk. And Lawrence is behaving as if it's the first date. He's checking his clothes. He's checking his breath. He's popping mints that he's choking on, waiting on her, looking at the door constantly to see if she arrives. And when she arrives, it's this smile of, wow, she's here. And as Issa walks in, she falls. And she falls really, really hard. So hard that everybody in the bar is just like, oh. And even Lawrence is just like, dang. And all the employees are just like, ma'am, are you okay? And people are asking her if she's okay. And she's just like, no, I'm just, I'm just going to stay here on the ground. I just, I just need a moment. And I probably would have done the same thing. It's like, let me just, let me just lay here in this. Cause I can't just believe what happened. And Lawrence checks on her and he says, you know, Hey, are, do you need a moment? She's like, yeah, I just, yeah, I just need a moment. <laughs> so he goes back to the bar and sits to wait on her. And she finally gathers herself, gets her purse that's a few feet away. That's flown out of her hand when she falls. She meets him at the bar and they say, hey, how you doing? They just give a quick, how have you been? And he's like, man, you know, how did the block party go? And she's like, man, you know, it almost killed me, but... I did that. It was a really, really good event, and I'm just happy at the way that it turned out. He apologized for not being able to attend, and she's like, no, that's fine. It's okay. And he says, you know, I just came back from Frisco not too long ago on an interview, and I even saw Molly. She's like, oh, you know, that's great, but Molly and I, you know, we're not talking anymore. And he laughs at first because he can't believe that it's true. She's like, no, um... We haven't talked, so, and he says, man, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. But she then asks him, hey, you know, what is it that you wanted to tell me? And as he's about to tell her something that's on his mind, a Lizzo song drops and everybody in the bar is just like, hey, and excited. You got people popping over their shoulder, ordering drinks. And Issa's like, wait, what? And Lawrence is like, I, I wanted to say, I, but it gets too loud. And they both agree screaming that, hey, maybe we should go somewhere where we can hear each other a little better and have better conversations. So they agree to that. As they get outside, they're talking and she, he's like, you know, we ought to go to this restaurant that we always talked about going to, but we never went to. And she says, well, you know, I've been there, not even just once, but several times. And it's this energy from Lawrence, like, wow, she's really doing everything that she said she's going to do from the block party to endeavors in her life. And now this restaurant, and she seems so sure of, it, of herself. So he it gets an Uber. They get into the Uber, and when they, they're sitting there, the driver's just like, oh, you know, you two look like a really, really good couple. And they're like, no, we're not a couple. And she's like, yeah, you know, you guys look like you've been together for a while, and if you got something that's, that's, that's right, you make sure you hold on to that. And, you know, you also look like a married couple. He's like, no, you know, we're not a married couple, but, you know, I thought about it. You know, I, I even bought a ring. And Issa looks at him with this shock, like, he really bought a ring at one point? He's like, yeah, you know, I almost, you know, got a ring, and but, you know, things didn't work out. And the driver's like, well, you know, you can do that now. And she turns around, has a camera with the light on, and they're blinded by it. And he's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to do that now. Why don't, you just, why don't you just turn around, focus on the road, and turn the camera off? <laughs> so as they're driving... They get to the eatery, and when they get to the eatery, they're still chit-chatting a little bit. And when they get seated, Issa says, you know what? 
I know this menu I'm going to order and she's ordering all of these things and the waitress is impressed and so is Lawrence because she knows it from front to back and the waitress takes the order and he's just like, yeah, you know, I know it's a lot of food, but it's a lot of stuff that we got to taste. Then there is this awkward silence when you know a very needed conversation is about to happen. And Lawrence says, you know, what I wanted to ask you, I'm... What if what if we would have stayed together? You know what what would have happened? And he says, well, I I don't know. It's a good question. I'm not sure. And Lauren says, you know, why Daniel? And Issa takes a moment and she says, you know, he just he just popped up and he gave me attention. I I felt wanted. And with you, I just felt you didn't want me anymore. And Lawrence is like, man, like, was our relationship that bad? And Issa says, you know, after I would get off of work, I would drive around for a little while just to avoid you and everything at home. I just felt that way. Every time I would come home, I would just be afraid of these old patterns just happening over and over again. And nothing, nothing that I could say or do would snap you out of whatever you were going through. And Lauren says, you know, I just, seeing you leave every day for work and come back, it just reminded me over and over again that I had nowhere to go. I had nothing to do. You know, I even thought about going home. But then I would be too embarrassed to do that. And Issa says, well, why didn't you ever tell me that? And he says, you know, I just, I just couldn't. And when you did what you did, it seemed like an easy way out of everything. The relationship, just everything. And Issa says, you know, speaking of questions, did you, did you really buy a ring? And Lauren says, yeah, I, I did. And he's like, are you just not realizing that you ain't nothing? And she's laughing like, whatever, you know, I, I may not be anything, but, you know, I'm something now. You know, I'm another person. I'm not the way that I used to be. And I've changed. And she gets up to go to the restroom. But then he receives a text message from Condola saying, hey, are you free Tuesday? Maybe we can hang out. And are you busy? And he responds back that he's going to check back with her later on. As they're leaving the restaurant with small talk, they hear in the background, brrr, brrr, brrr. <laughs> and it's TSA Bay like, hey. And he's just like, oh, no. Uh. And he's giving her a hug like, hey, what's up? And Lauren's just like, hey, what's up? How do you guys know each other? He's just like, no, please, no. And he's very blunt like, hey, you know, we used to get it in. And it's like, oh, and he's with somebody. But clearly the girl that he's with doesn't care. And she recognizes it as it's in the past. And she could care less about whoever this person is. But she says hello to Issa and says hello to Lawrence. And he's like, oh, you know, that's interesting. But TSA base says, you know, hey, y'all have been to this art walk. You know, we're going to this art walk later on. Maybe y'all should go. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, well, it's nice to see you. And they leave. And Lawrence is just so floored and happy to rub it in her face. Like, oh, okay, like y'all used to mess around. All right. And Issa's just like, okay, let me have it. And Issa's saying to Lawrence, man, you know, Remember the art walk? Like, if you don't have anything planned, maybe it's something that we should do and something that we should go to together. And he says, you know, okay, maybe I'll consider that. Maybe we could check it out sometime. But, you know, I got a jet, so I'll talk to you later. And he gives a quick kiss on the cheek and hugs her, and he's walking away, and Issa's just like, like, really? What's that about? And is just disappointed that he's gone and that he's went away. But he's just joking, and he goes, blah, blah, and he comes back, and he shares that moment, like, girl, come on, let's go to this art walk. So as they're going to the art walk, they're talking about their careers, things that they've done, and then they see an abstract painting, which explains and shows happiness. And Lauren says, you know, do you like this? 
She's like, well, yeah, and it really doesn't make any sense. She's like, well, you know, it's kind of like happiness for real. It's really not clear and defined what happiness is supposed to be. And Lars is like, man, you know, I really like this new you. She says, you know, I do too. And Issa wants to know, Lawrence, are you happy? And Lawrence says something very interesting. He says, um, I'm realizing, you know, I used to want to be the owner of this and the lead of that. But I see now that I'm a good team player and I don't have to be the boss about everything. And I'm, I'm pretty good with that. And it makes me happy. I'm happy now. And Issa says, wow, that's really interesting. I'm glad that you're happy. He then gets a text from Condola, and he responds back, I don't know, you know, what's going to happen later on or whatever. And Issa says, you know, is that Condola? What's up with that? And he's like, I don't know. You know, I'm still trying to see what's going on, but I just, I don't know. We need to talk about a few things. Lawrence sees something that he likes, which is a painting, but we don't get to see what it is. Lawrence makes it known to Issa about where he lives and like, wow, I don't live too much further away from you. And Issa's just like, you got to be kidding me. You lived close to me and you didn't say anything this whole time. It's just like, no, I didn't say anything. But, you know, let's just get an Uber and, you know, let's just head that way and call it a night. And he wants to see he wants her to see his new place. As, you know, he tells the Uber driver, hey, you know, give 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 her a moment to come check my place. And then, you know, I want you to see her face when she gets out. And as they enter Lawrence's apartment, it's like he's really proud to show her that he has a really nice place. And he's taken where he lives very seriously. And she's even joking about, wow, he has great plugins and how everything is nice and clean. He's like, yeah, you know, this is just my place. And she's just like, wow, I'm really am I admiring where he lives now and how things have changed and how he's not the same anymore. She's like, well, you know, where's your restroom? So she goes to the restroom and he takes his phone call outside to speak with Condola saying that he'll come by later. When he re-enters the house, Issa's standing there and he seems shocked that she was standing so close to the door. And Issa says, so was that Condola? And he says, yeah, I, I'm sorry you had to hear that I was talking to her, but you know, it's really a few things that we need to talk about. And Issa seems really disappointed. And she says, you know, let me let me go ahead and leave. But you know what? I'm I'm not ready for this night to end. And Lauren says, "Yeah, tonight really made me happy." And Issa looks him dead in the eye and says, "You make me happy." And Lauren says, "You make me happy too." And they share a long awaited passionate kiss and we see beautiful scenes and body shots of them making love all night long. And it's a very intimate moment because it allows us to compare and contrast all of the different intimacies they've had with different people and how it was rushed and quickies here and quickies there and 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 one night stands and with people they could care less about but when we see these scenes how it's a very very touching compassionate love scene it really just shows all of the passion that they really still had for one another after all of this time the morning after they share some smiles and say good morning and Issa's just like wow you know you're going to Frisco huh and he's like, girl, you know you're going to miss me. And she's like, no, I'm not. But they laugh about it because there's clearly some energy and there's clearly a lot of love left. But it's really not touched on. And he asked her, hey, you want me to take you home? She's like, no. He's like, what about an Uber? She's like, no, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to walk home. And he says, well, okay. And as she's walking home, you can tell that she might be a little confused, conflicted, but she's just using that moment to walk home just to think because so much has happened in this night. 
and she passes by areas that have been gentrified and also sees some places that are still standing. So there are a lot of things that could be going through her mind at the moment. And that is the end of the episode. Only two episodes left. I absolutely loved this episode. It's all about communication. We finally, as the fans, got to see the conversation that didn't happen, the conversation that needed to happen between Issa and Lawrence. Just saying what you feel, even if there's sadness, even if there's anger, but there was so much going on at the time before and after their breakup that they really didn't get that moment to just purge everything that was on their mind. From the beginning of the episode, it was really cute to see that Lawrence was really nervous and he had the energy as if it was a first date, fumbling the mint and, and checking his breath and looking around and constantly checking the door to see if she was there. And even Issa arriving and fumbling and falling over her own feet. Them talking and realizing that they've changed in a short period of time, even the drink that Issa used to drink is different. She's changed and he can see that her energy is totally different. She doesn't walk and talk the same. Even when asking about her block party, she says that it took a lot out of her, but she got it done. And he saw this fire in her that he really didn't see before. And it really gave him this wave of, wow, she's really changed. They get to the point that Lauren says, you know what, you know me, I know you. It's very evident that we really need to talk. We really needed to see this moment. As they're speaking, they're talking about how they've changed, how they've evolved into this world of adulthood that we're all struggling with or questioning. Who am I? What am I doing with career? I thought it was really beautiful how Lauren said, you know, at one point I thought I wanted to own this and be the leader of that, but I'm okay with working as a team. I'm stronger that way. My thoughts are able to come out better. And Issa said, you know, the block party was cool, but she realizes that it's okay to take a few paces back and do smaller events in order to get through what she's trying to communicate, bringing the light to the community and doing more things. So that was beautiful. And it was a message to all of the viewers saying that do what makes you happy. And as they're talking about what makes them happy, they're saying that they're realizing that it's okay that they thought that this was the goal, but they actually enjoyed this. Very beautiful and very well written. I also thought it was interesting that when they were in the Uber, how Issa was really surprised that Lawrence at one point purchased a wedding ring. It really floored her that, wow, he really took me seriously, but we were just in this funky moment. Like everything that was going on in our lives was just really just confusing. The frustrating part is she said, you wanted to move home, but you felt embarrassed. You didn't want to do this. You, why didn't you tell me? So the writing is letting us know that communication, communication, communication is so important. And what they were going through at that time really didn't allow that communication. But you also think about had they not been apart to discover who they were, which Issa says that you can't look for happiness in other people. You can't expect to have validation in a relationship, which is so true. The fact that they took that time apart really pushed out who am I as a person? And what am I doing? I also thought it was beautiful that Lawrence expressed as a man that I watched you every day when you went to work. And it was the constant reminder that I had nothing going on and it really made me sad really, really good to see and hear from a man's perspective. As women, we're independent, we can do a lot of things on our own, but also in a relationship, everybody, no matter who's involved, wants to feel needed, wants to have that attention, no matter what, male, female, whatever the situation is. And he asked that question, what was it? What was it about him? Why him? And it was very simple. Her answer was very simple and it wasn't complicated. 
that he gave me that attention. He made me want to feel like I was wanted, like I was needed, and he paid attention to me. And when you hear it, you think, wow, how minute is that? How small was that of the reasoning why? She says, no excuse, but that's what kind of brought us together in, in, in really just that opposite to track, bad situation, coping situation that happened. What did you think of this episode? I thought it was very well written. I loved how they looked at the art and they interpreted the art. One of the pieces that they saw was concerning happiness. And it really was abstract because happiness can change. Things that you think that may, may be right for you can change over a period of time. And it's not a straight line. I even said in my podcast show, You're So Not Okay, and I'll leave the link of that down below, talking about how don't let other things around you and in the way that the world is shifting decide what makes you happy don't live your life in a certain way and don't go in a certain direction because that's what you think you're supposed to do lawrence thought he was supposed to be a boss Issa thought she was supposed to do blank and supposed to do this. Your life is your own. Your happiness is your own. And I thought it was very beautiful. I love how they leave the cliffhanger in saying, okay, what does this mean between Issa and Lawrence? I love how they leave that cliffhanger because you want the audience coming back. The goal as a writer is to have as many seasons as possible without depleting the storyline. So I actually loved that. What was interesting is that Lawrence saw a painting at the end that he purchased, but we didn't see what it was. Is that saying to us that as his character is moving forward, he's seeing things in a different way? That moment where he was proud to show her where he lived, um, that everything was clean. She jokes about the Glade plugins and everything being not being nice. It's like, wow, look at me. I'm taking this adulthood very seriously. Look how I've changed. They were proud to show each other how they evolved and how evolved and how they got better. When Condola gives the text about can you come by and he calls her and the hurt that Issa had, I was really, really, really happy to see that in the writing, they let Issa fight for Lawrence. She said, I want to stay. You make me happy. And Lawrence says, you make me happy too. I was happy to see that that's a change in Issa because she has that fire to where before she probably wouldn't have said anything. She made it known that you make me happy, I have fun, and I don't want this to end. This is a new her. And I think that it really gave Lawrence this, this is a new Issa that I like. So I really, really love that some grown adult conversations were happening. They were sharing their insights and I thought it was magnifique. It was absolutely amazing. But of course, I'm gonna complain like everybody else that 30 minutes was not enough but they're contracted to only do 30 minutes. It is a comedic drama that is 30 minutes long. Um, if it were an hour, I do feel that the story would have depleted itself because keep in mind, even though we're going into different characters with Molly and Andrew and uh, different characters, this is about how Issa's character is the main focus and you don't want to have so much going on that the show becomes confusing and we're following 50 different people's lives okay so let me know what you thought about that i wanted to show my face and to see you guys again i hope that you all are staying safe i hope that you all are being proactive and are taking care of yourselves remember june 23rd is greenleaf season five if you need to catch up go to the playlist and watch season four's recaps and those comments and your estimates for season five. Check that out because it's coming and I'm gonna do those reviews again for season five. I will be here and make sure to check out the playlist for other amazing television show and movie reviews and recaps. I love you until next time, bye.